Okay, shall we begin our adult Sunday school? Let us begin our word of prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank thee for this day which thou hast made, a day of rest to remind us of the eternal rest to come. Help us, O God, to walk by faith and not by sight as we go through the struggles of life and as we fight a good fight of faith day by day. By thy unfailing power and leading of thy Holy Spirit and by thy Holy Word. May we not fail thee, may we be found faithful, obeying thy word and fulfilling thy good will for our life on this earth. We commit our lesson on the biblical feasts, festivals, and custom of Israel unto thy loving hand. And help us, O God, to learn precious lessons which will build up our faith and knowledge of our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Cleanse us of all our sins by the blood of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' most precious and holy name, we give thanks and pray. Amen. Today is our last lesson uh, on the feasts and festivals of Israel. Uh, God willing, we will cover the custom of Israel um, the next two lessons. Okay? Namely, the, the custom of marriage and funeral. Okay? And today, we will cover the feast of dedication. And so, if you have your notes, uh, look under the heading origin. The feast of Dedication, also called the Hanukkah, in Hebrew means dedication. So the, the, the word Hanukkah uh, means dedication. The Feast of Dedication is celebrated by the Jews as early as during the intertestamental period. And this intertestamental period uh, is also known as the 400 years of silence. Uh, whereby there is no special revelation from God. And no scripture is written during this period uh, between the last prophet Malachi of the Old Testament all the way to the beginning of the Gospel uh, in, the, in the New Testament. Uh, in particular, prior to the birth of John the Baptist. Okay, so during this period, uh, there is no special revelation. So God did not give any revelation to His people to be written as scriptures okay, in these 400 years. And so that is why it is called the silent years. And so coming back to Hanukkah, Hanukkah being the festival of lights occurred during the month of Kislev. Okay, if you look at the chart, you will find that the, the month of Kislev is the ninth month of the Hebrew calendar, which is between uh, late November to early December of the Gregorian calendar, which is the calendar that we are using. Okay, I hope you can see that. And beginning on Kislev 25th, continuing for eight days, so every Jewish family will lit up the candles on a very special uh, candle stand, the candelabra, okay, called the menorah. It is a seven candlestick lampstand. And so the Jewish home will light up the candles okay, of the lampstand. Okay, and then families uh, will gather together for prayers, for singing, feasting and gifts at change. Again, like all other biblical feasts, the Hanukkah or the Feast of Dedication is celebrated by the Jews because of a great deliverance from the enemies. Okay, and it was during the intertestamental period. So when Israel was conquered by the Greek oppressor called Antiochus, Apiphanes, during the Maccabean period. It started with his father, King Antiochus III. 
who is the king of Syria, uh, who took over Israel. And this whole historical account is recorded uh, in the first book of Maccabees, which is one of the 14 books of the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha uh, are not considered as the inspired scriptures. Okay, although not inspired, but it contains a valuable historical account. Now, not inspired means they do not have the same authority as the Bible that we have. Okay, but it does provide a very valuable historical record for the origin of the Feast of Dedication. And this is important enough for the Jews to set a day, or rather eight days, of memorial to be kept from generation to generation. If you were to look at the Old Testament scriptures, surely there will be no mention because it happened after the Old Testament period. But what about the New Testament? Interestingly, there was one mention of the Feast of Dedication in the Gospel of John. In John chapter 10, uh, verse 22, which is also uh, list found in your notes. Okay, John 10, 22 records for us, and it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of the Dedication, and it was winter. Okay, so the whole of the New Testament, only at this place, okay, only in this verse, that we find the Feast of the Dedication. And so it was agreed by all commentators that it was a reference to the Feast of Dedication that originated during the Maccabean period. And so this account in the Gospel of John could imply that the Lord Jesus himself kept the Feast of Dedication okay, in remembrance of the great deliverance by God through the Maccabees from the gracious Syrian Empire. Okay, so today we will look at one of the chapters in the book of 1 Maccabees. Okay, I hope uh, you will not find that this is you are attending a Catholic class because to the Catholic, these are inspired scriptures. Okay, but we turn to 1 Maccabees for the historical record, okay, which will uh, give to us a, a good background okay, of how the Feast of Dedication comes about. And so bear with me as I read this long passage in 1 Maccabees chapter 4, verses 1 to 59. Okay, so you, uh, you have your notes, so you can follow me as I read. Now, Israel has already fallen into the hand of the Syrian. But it was after Antiochus Epiphanes defiled the, the temple of Jerusalem, Solomon's temple, in other words by putting a pig on the altar table. And so it was a great insult to the, the Jews okay, on the worship of Jehovah. And so a group of Jewish warriors rose up and fought back. Okay, and this group of Jewish warriors was led by this man called Judas Maccabees. Okay, and so his, his entire army uh, they, they were all Jews, and they were known as the Maccabees. All right? So I will explain as I read through the text here in 1 Maccabees chapter 4. Okay, so bear with me. So 1 Maccabees chapter 4, verses, verses 1 to 59. Then took Gorgias, okay, Gorgias is one of the Syria generals, 5,000 footmen and 1,000 of the best horsemen, and we move out of the camp by night. So the Syrians already knew uh, about the uprising of these Jewish warriors, the Maccabees. And so now they, they came to fight against them. Verse 2. To the end, he might rush in upon the camp of the Jews and smite them suddenly. And the men of the fortress were his guide. Now, when Judas, ah, this, this man is Judas Maccabees. Okay. Heard thereof, he himself removed and the valiant man with him, that he might smite the king's army, which was at 
in Mayus. Oh, so this, this king is Antiochus okay, Epiphanes. Uh, as a result, this was also famously known as the Emmaus War. Verse 4. But as yet the forces were dispersed from the camp, in the mean season came Gordius by night into the camp of Judas, and when he found no man there, he sought them in the mountain. For said he, These fellows flee from us. But as soon as it was day, Judas showed himself in the plain with 3,000 men, who nevertheless had neither armour nor sword to their mind. And they saw the camp of the heathen, that it was strong and well harnessed, and compassed round about with horsemen, and these were experts of war. So we find two armies, one with armour and one without armour. Okay, so how to fight? Well, of course, the one with armor will surely win. But not when God is among his people. Okay, not when God is fighting for his people. Verse 8. Then Judas said, then said Judas to the men that were with him, Fear ye not their multitude, neither be ye afraid of their exalt. Remember how our fathers were delivered in the Red Sea when Pharaoh pursued them with an army. Now therefore, let us cry unto heaven, if peradventure the Lord will have mercy upon us, and remember the covenant of our fathers, and destroy this host before our face this day, that so all the heathen may know that there is one who delivered and saved Israel. And so we see that Judas Maccabees did the right thing by turning to God, by pointing the people to God. Okay? Trusting in God rather than the weapons of war okay? to win the war. Verse 12. Then the strangers lifted up their eyes and saw them coming over against them. Therefore they went out of the battle of the camp to battle, but they that were with Judas sounded their trumpets. So they joined battle, and the heathen being discomfited, fled into the plain. Howbeit all the hindmost of them were slain with the sword, for they pursued them unto Gazara, and unto the plains of Edomia, and Azotus, and Jemnia, so that they were slain of them upon a three thousand men. So God's people won. Okay, verse 16. This done, Judas returned again with his host from pursuing them and said to the people, Be not greedy of the spoil inasmuch as there is a battle before us. And Gorgias and his host are here by us in the mountain. But stand ye now against our enemies and overcome them. And after this, ye may boldly take the spoil. As Judas was yet speaking these words, there appeared a part of them looking out of the mountain, who when they perceived that the Jews had put their hold to flight and were burning the tent, for the smoke that was, that was seen declared what was done. When therefore they perceived this thing, they were sore afraid. And seeing also the hold of Judas in the plain ready to fight, they fled everyone into the land of strangers. Then Judas returned to spoil the tent, where they got much gold and silver and blue silk and purple of the sea and great riches. After this, they went home and sang a song of thanksgiving and praised the Lord in heaven because it is good, because his mercy endured forever. Okay, thus Israel had a great deliverance that day. Now all the strangers that had escaped came and told Lysias, which is, who is another Syrian general, what had happened, who when he heard thereof was confounded and discouraged because neither such thing as he would were done unto Israel, nor such thing as the king commanded him will come to pass because they have been told to uh, conquer over Israel. 
But how is it that Israel was, was able to fight back and even win? So something did not cross over their mind. The next year, verse 28, Therefore, following the sires, gathered together three score thousand choice men of food and five thousand horsemen, that he might subdue them. So they came to Edomia and pitched their tents at Bethsura. And Judas met them with ten thousand men. And when he saw that mighty army, he, who is Judas Maccabees, prayed and said, Blessed art thou, O Saviour of Israel, who did quell the violence of the mighty man by the hand of thy servant David, and gave us the host of strangers into the hand of Jonathan, the son of Saul, and his armor-bearer. Shut up this army in the hand of thy people Israel, and let them be confounded in their power and horsemen. Make them be, to be of no courage, and cause the boldness of their strength to fall away, and let them quake at their destruction. Cast them down with the sword of them that love thee, and let all those that know thy name praise thee with thanksgiving. So they joined battle, and there were slain of the host of Lysias, about five thousand men. Even before them were they slain. Now when Lysias saw his army put to flight, and the manliness of Judah's soldiers, and how they were ready either to live or die valiantly, he went into Antiochia and, and gathered together a company of strangers. And having made his army greater than he was, he purposed to come again into Judea. Then said Judas and his brethren, Behold, our enemies are discomfited. Let us go up to cleanse and dedicate the sanctuary. Upon this, all the hosts assembled themselves together and went up into Mount Zion. And when they saw the sanctuary desolate and the altar profane and the gates burned up and shrub growing in the court, as in the forest, or in one of the mountains, yea, and the priest chambers put down. So probably at this point, well, they saw with their eyes how uh, perhaps the remnant of the pig's offering was still on the altar table. And then also how many idols were found in the temple, utterly desecrated the holy temple of God. Verse 39. They rent their clothes and made great lamentation and cast ashes upon their head and fell down flat to the ground upon their faces and blew an alarm with the trumpet and cried towards heaven. Then Judas appointed certain men to fight against those that were in the fortress until he had cleansed the sanctuary. So he chose priests of blameless conversation such as had pleasure in the law, who cleanse the sanctuary and bear out the default stone into an unclean place. And when they, has, when as they consulted what to do with the altar of burnt offering, which was profane, they thought it best to pull it down, lest it should be a reproach to them, because the heathen had defiled it. Wherefore they pulled it down and laid up the stone in the mountain of the temple in a convenient place until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. Then they took whole stones according to the law and built a new altar according to the former and made up the sanctuary and the things that were within the temple and hallowed the courts. They made also new holy vessels and into the temple they brought the candlestick and the altar of burnt offering and of incense and the table. And upon the altar they burned incense, and the lamp that were upon the candlestick they lighted, that they might give light in the temple. Furthermore, they set their loaves upon the table, and spread out the veils, and finished all the work which they had begun to make. Now on the five and twentieth day of the ninth month, which is called the month Kislev, okay, which is uh, actually Kislev, in the hundred Forty and eight years, they rose up betimes in the morning and offered sacrifice according to the law upon the new altar of burnt offering which they had made. 
Okay, look at what time and what day the heathen have profaned it. Even in that was it dedicated with song and cistern and harp and cymbal. Then all the people fell upon their faces, worshipping and praising the God of heaven, which had given them good success. Okay, they knew God had helped them, so they are praising uh, God and gave God all the glory. Verse 56. And so they kept the dedication of the altar eight days and offered burnt offerings with gladness and sacrificed the sacrifice of deliverance and praise. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold and with seal. And the gates and the chambers they renewed and hanged doors upon them. Thus were there very great gladness among the people, for that the reproach of the heathen was put away. Moreover, Judas and his brethren, with the whole congregation of Israel, ordained that the days of the dedication of the altar should be kept in their season from year to year by the space of eight days, from the five and twentieth day of the month, Kesriu or Kislev, with mirth and gladness. Okay, up to here. So it was an amazing account. Now, as you read, uh, do you find that well, it is quite similar to, uh, I mean, the, the, the Bible that we are, that we have. Well, because simply the fact is, this was translated by the King James. So you can find some similarity. But at the same time, if you are empowered by the Holy Spirit, you also find that the reading is quite not so smooth. Okay, you, you will find that it's more of man's words rather than God's word. Somehow you have this, uh, you don't have the confidence. Okay, you don't have the confidence that these, these are God's words. Okay, but these are the historical accounts okay, that we can, uh, that is very valuable resources. Okay, because um, these are the records, historical records that tell us what happened in the past. Okay, all right. So we tap on historical record to help us remember what happened in history. Okay, we may not have to take this as God's word. They are not authoritative. We do not have to uh, obey them as if they have commandment in them. But these are very precious historical records okay, for our learning. Now in this account, record the first feast of dedication. Okay, held in 148 years okay, of the Greek period, which was equivalent to 164 BC. And that was three years after the Syrian king Antiochus Epiphanes okay, had defiled the temple by offering a swine, a pig, okay, on the erected altar on top of the altar table. Now, under Antiochus Epiphanes, also called King uh, Antiochus the Fourth, the Jews were severely persecuted. Okay, the Jews suffered, and many of them died horribly. And those who survived were forced to abandon the, the Jewish faith, okay, their faith in Jehovah. And they were forced to worship the Greek idols, the Greek gods. However, according to tradition, a group of four Jewish brothers, led by Judas Maccabees, decided to form an army of religious freedom fighters. And these courageous men came to be known as the Maccabees. Now, this group of Jewish fighters, they are, they are actually very small. There are a few thousand of them only. Compared to the powerful Syrian army, and so all in all, they took about three years okay, to defeat the, the, the gracious Syrian occupation. And it was regarded as a miracle because of the size of the army that they had. And yet was able to uh, take back the temple and win over the enemy. And so that was a victorious deliverance. Okay, and they believed that God was the one who helped them. And so it was a great victory. And after regaining the temple, 
the Maccabees removed all the idols. Okay, and they tried to rebuild the temple, well, at, at least renovate it, okay, and sanctify the temple. And then the temple was rededicated to the Lord on the month of Kislev the 25th. Okay, it was the first feast of dedication okay, to mark the significant event for the Jews. And that was how the feast of dedication came about. And also according to tradition, it was believed that God sent a miraculous provision alongside with the significant event by keeping the flame on the menorah. Okay, the menorah is the seven tender stick. All right, and, and they lit up the menorah okay, because they want to uh, light up the whole temple. Okay, but they only have oil that uh, is able to burn for one day. They want to burn it for continuously for eight days, but they only have enough oil for one day. The reason is because the Syrians had desecrated the oil. Okay, and therefore, the, the only oil that, that is left can only last for one day. But what is the miracle is, although the oil that was to be lasted for one day, somehow, some way, lasted for the eight days. Some way, somehow, they, they, they were so, also amazed. And that gave them time to make new oil. Okay, and, and sanctify the oil to keep the menorah burning beyond the eight days. And so that was, the, that was how also that the Feast of Dedication also become the, the, the Feast of Light okay, or the Festival of Light. And so it's a very meaningful feast that the Jews kept you know, year after year to remember God's deliverance of the Jews. But how did the Jews observe the Hanukkah today? Okay, if you look at under today's observance, the Feast of Dedication, more commonly known as Hanukkah today, is celebrated by Jewish family today. Okay, it is a tradition for the family to gather together with the lighting of the menorah. Okay, and this is central to the celebration. The Hanukkah menorah is a candelabra with seven. Okay, please make the correction. Not eight candle holders in a row. Okay, it's seven. And then it's in the middle, not nine candle holders. Okay, position slightly higher than the rest. Okay, right in the middle, okay, where beside there are three candle holders. Okay, so all together there will be seven. Seven candlesticks. Okay, and remember the miracle of the provision of the day supply that in the end lasted eight days. Uh, so they want to remember such a miracle. And so how, how to remember such a miracle? Uh, so uh, with oil, uh, they, 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 they have fried food. Okay, they have oily food. And that's how they remember the, the, the miracle of such a provision. And then also songs were sung and games were played by everyone in the household. Okay, and they were also give a chain, probably added because uh, it was held in proximity to Christmas. Okay, uh, Kislev is Kislev 25th is uh, end of November, and between end of November and beginning of December, quite close to Christmas. Okay, and it was winter. I thought they would come together and have gift a change okay, in, in this celebration. Now again, on the outset, it can become just a holiday of party and enjoyment. Without the remembrance of the historical account okay, on how the Feast of Dedication comes about, this would end up nothing okay, but just eat, drink and be merry. I thought it is important for the Jewish family to highlight the, the entire account. Okay, and so I think for us also it's meaningful as I read through 1 Maccabees chapter 4. Okay, it, it will enable us to remember the, the, the historical account of how the Feast of Dedication 
or Hanukkah comes about. And indeed, it was a, a, a great deliverance okay, that God saved His people. God has not forgotten His people. God has not abandoned His people. Even though it may be a 400 years of silence. I mean, God is silent doesn't mean God is dead or God has abandoned His people. God is still living. God is still very much interested in His people. And so that is a God whom we believe today. And so the story of God's deliverance of His people needs to be retold from generation to generation. Not only for the Jews, but also of all God's people, including Gentiles like you and me. And so in conclusion, Hanukkah served as a sober reminder of God's faithfulness to His people, even in time of persecution and oppression. So no matter how powerful and evil the enemies of God try to destroy His people, they will never succeed finally. They may be able to kill and destroy them bodily, but they can never destroy their soul, which have been saved by the precious blood of our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so that, that is a, a, a great reminder how we have been saved for a higher purpose. We are saved for heaven. We are saved to bear witness to God's power. Okay, although we may suffer, we may even die for our faith. But that is not the end. We know that we have the hope of heaven. And God will give us the glorified body that will live forever. God allowed persecution so that His people may learn to trust in Him and persevere on. His grace is all sufficient to help them go through all the suffering and even to die for their faith. All that they need to do is to be faithful even unto death. Okay, just as the Lord Jesus Christ was faithful to the mission that God gave him, even unto death. And by his death, we are saved. By his death, all our sins are forgiven. And so we have a living Savior. Because Jesus did not just die and then buried in the grave. His resurrection, his rising up from the dead, proved to us that God has accepted all that the Lord Jesus has done on the cross to be our substitute to be our atonement. Okay, so we thank God for what He has done. And so the keeping of Hanukkah to point to the world, or point the world to Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. We know that this world is still in spiritual darkness. So dark that you know, there is no light that we can see from this world. But thank God for putting the gospel light. Because the gospel light is what this world would need. And this light was there since God gave the, 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 the very first gospel in Genesis 3.15. And that light has been burning since then. And even un, un, until now. And, and, and God is pleased to use us to be His little light so that we may be able to point the world to the gospel light. The Lord Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. And so anyone who wants to be forgiven of all his sins and be saved for heaven must come to this only light which God has sent and God has provided. And so Jesus is the light and only he can save. And so the way that the world is going to see this light is through his people. And they do so by holy living. And they do so by fulfilling the great commission to the saving of souls in this last day. And so God is pleased to use you and me to show forth the gospel light okay, by living out as children of the light. Okay, we are all called the children of the light. No more children of darkness anymore. And we are also called the children of righteousness. So we are to live righteous life for the Lord so that others may be able to see Christ in us. And so will they see Christ in our life 
in our words and in all that we do, well, we must dedicate ourselves to the Lord for Him to use as He pleases. Okay, so may God find us faithful when we see Christ face to face one day. Okay, so that's what we have uh, in this lesson. The next time we come back, we will cover the custom of Israel, namely marriage and funeral. Okay, let us bow our head in prayer. We thank you, O Lord, for the testimony of this great account, how thou hast kept thy people safe from the powerful enemies. We thank you, O Lord, for hearing their prayers, and especially the prayer of thy servant, Judas Maccabees, and for using him to lead Israel to stand firm in their faith in thee, all the way to the end. May we also do the same for such a time as this. Help us, O God, that we may earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints, that in every spiritual warfare we face day by day, we will always remember thy word, that we will always fight a good fight of faith. May we be found faithful even unto death, till we meet our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, face to face. Dismiss us, O Lord, with all thy blessing, and we commit all this with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you and God bless.